Uh, just uh, having a little sit down and I just wanted to talk a little bit about molar technique and uh, how it came to be a little bit of the history about it. Now, excuse me if I'm vague, this isn't a history lesson. It's just what I heard from my drum teacher. It makes a lot of sense uh, and hopefully makes you think about mold technique in a little bit of a different way from the kind of technical aspect that it's become by some, some people will uh, try and make it seem very uh, technical and very advanced and really it's just a very simple technique. So, um, my drum teacher Malcolm Garrett uh, was taught in part by Jim Chapin uh, who taught him molar technique uh, and they became very good friends uh, and I think Jim told him this story um, Jim Chapin was taught as far as I know by Mola and who also taught people uh, some of the great kind of jazz drummers of course as soon as I was trying to remember their names they go so I'm not even bother, bother trying to remember but some of the some of the kind of top people you'll know if you look it up um, so Moller had taught some of these guys and obviously um, he had either developed this method after talking to a Civil War uh, drummer or he had been a drummer in the Civil War. I'm not quite sure uh, of the dates and stuff, but the American Civil War, uh, they developed, uh, they had to develop a, a system for marching where they'd march big long distances across the country and uh, they obviously had to have drums to keep the, keep the pace going. And the drummer's uh, job was to play uh, on a side drum. And so one of the reasons for people picking up this technique of, of, of playing uh, the traditional, as you say, uh, is because the side drum's at the side and you play like this. And these days the drums the, on the drum kit, unless you set all your drums up to the tilt, um, it's sort of, it's more of a style thing, uh, in my opinion, to, to play like that. So, so that's one of the things, side drum. But the, the other thing that, with the molar technique is that um, it, it, they had to be able to play for a long time at, at a fairly loud pace on these big, uh, big kind of side drums with calf skin. So you can imagine it's not as bouncy and lovely and kind of finely tuned as uh, the kind of modern plastic skins. Um, it would be soggy, uh, well, it would be wet anyway and damp. And, and you know what happens to a, to a drum skin, to one of these like kind of goat skin or calf skin drums when it gets damp, you're not going to get any kind of bounce from it at all. So you couldn't rely on bounce and um, you had to play for a long time uh, loud and fast, or relatively fast anyway. So the drummers were having a lot of trouble doing this and uh, they, by, from talking to slaves, uh, and I imagine the slave, slaves or, or guys who had been liberated from slavery uh, had been drummers uh, back in Africa and the, the Africans obviously have their tribal drumming and, and uh, African drumming and, and all this kind of thing. They had developed a method for playing the drums which involved very kind of loose playing uh, and using the bounce and allowing the bounce to kind of carry through so you, you only had to do so much work and the more relaxed you are, the, the more you get out of it. And really just using momentum and balance uh, to, to build up um, your strokes. And so uh, that had been refined over hundreds of years of African drumming into uh, what became the molar technique. So the molar technique is actually taken from these, it's a very deep kind of uh, tradition, which, which had been named by Moller as a technique to, to help jazz drummers. Now, um, 
it obviously it helps more than just jazz drummers. It helps all sorts of um, drummers, and uh, the amazing hand technique that some people have got is down to molar technique a lot of the time, uh, with some variations. So I hope that's an interesting insight into where molar technique came from. Um, I will do some videos, obviously, uh, going through molar technique, uh, but I just wanted to show that uh, I know what I'm talking about when I talk about molar technique, and there's a lot of videos out there where people are talking about molar technique. Oh, this is the other interesting thing. So this, I learned this in the original molar technique book. There's this uh, backwards whipping movement that he describes, where you, you do your molar and then you pull back. And uh, after it was published, he realised he'd added that in, thinking, "Oh, that's that's much better actually." But actually, then he realised it was inefficient, and the publisher wouldn't allow him to uh, do a retraction because uh, they're too stingy to reprint it. So it stayed in, and ever since then, people have been looking at the Molar Technique book, the original book, thinking, "Well, this is old." Uh, this is the original thing, this is from Moller, he must know what he's talking about. Learning it like that, teaching it, and getting, um, adding this, this thing in, which is, which is wrong. Uh, and that's just one of the things that people talk about when they talk about Moller technique, uh, which is uh, a misappropriation of, of what it actually is. It's very, very simple Moller technique, and very, um, just a very refined, simple movement. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed my story uh, a couple of minutes and that you can see how, uh, how deeply natural the molar technique is. Something, anything that's survived that, that's actually something that's thousands of years old uh, must be worth learning.